Hi, hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. Uh, I'm back. It's been a minute since I've made a video like this, uh, but we've got some big stuff coming up. So I thought, got to get back to my, my job, you know? Um, so today, as you can see on the screen here, I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on the new Pokemon Legends Arceus game. Uh, there's a lot to cover, so we're going to get right into it, I suppose. Um, what I've done is I've gone and found some screenshots of the game and we'll pair them with some of the thoughts that I have. Uh, I wanted to use footage, uh, but I'm just not sure how that really goes on YouTube. And I don't want to get anything taken down, you know? So I've got some screenshots and hopefully that will suffice. We're also going to go over to the Legends Arceus website at a certain point uh, and check out some of the stuff that they have because that covers it better than I could in some screenshots. So to start with, let's go into some of the concepts of the game. It's open world, supposedly, but not really. Okay, that's why it's a big question mark next to the open world section. Uh, so in this picture here, as you can see, that looks pretty open to me. Um, now, from what I understand, the way that it's going to work is that it's going to be broken down into smaller areas that are open within themselves. Now, an easy sort of connection is if you've played Sword and Shield, that it could be similar to the Isle of Armor or the Crown Tundra. And I kind of disagree a bit. So as you can see here, this looks pretty open. It looks like you should be able to go pretty much anywhere. There's some water here, uh, which could block your way at a certain point. And there are some cliffs up here, but a little bit later on in the video, we're gonna get into some things that might get us around that. So here's a map. We have the map that's been released. It's a little bit of a blurry image, um, but we'll do our best. So this is the zoomed out version of the map. So as you can see up in this top corner here, it has been zoomed out all the way. Now in this highlighted section, you can see the area that it's breaking down, right? So it looks like the game will definitely be in sections. Now when you zoom in, this is what the inner part of that section looks like. Now it looks pretty open to me. Now I'm not sure exactly uh, if this is the same section of the map, uh, but look, there's some crossings, there's some water, it could be pretty much the same area. So the way that I feel like it's going to work is that early on in the game, some areas will be blocked off. Uh, within those areas, it will be relatively open world until you progress and get into some of the things that we have where you have access to some larger areas. Now, let's have a look at this image here. As you can see, these cliffs go into this valley here. This valley could be, uh, you know, with these cliffs on the side, a very narrow sort of path that you can go through. But I think with unlocking some of the Pokemon later in the games, that you should be able to go up and down these cliffs, hopefully. Which will mean that, let's say you want to get from down here where this little crystal picture is, and you want to come all the way up to where this sort of boss image is. You should be able to go in a straight line from A to B, once you've got everything unlocked and the ability to do so. So maybe not early game, but late game, I think you'll have that chance. The thing that's different with a lot of the comparisons to Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra is that you had to follow a path. Yes, they were open-ish sort of areas and worlds, but you had to go down this hill and you had to go around this corner and if there was a cliff in your way, you couldn't scale that cliff. I think that's gonna be where this game differentiates from it. And if you see here, look, in this snowy area, uh, you know, this hill looks pretty passable. You could probably walk up over that, I think. If you get to something like this, it's going to be a bit tougher. Um, something like this as well, obviously going to be harder. Uh, and then moving up to the back, you've got Mount Coronet. Now, I don't think we're going to be scaling Mount Coronet on the outside, but on the caves on the inside, I think that 
as you progress, the game is going to get more and more open uh, in terms of the world and how it looks and how you can traverse around that world. And we're going to go into that more uh, in a few slides' time. Okay, completing the Pokedex. That's another big concept uh, of this game. So, in this image, we've got a picture of some research tasks for Shinx. And this is essentially, I guess, what your Pokedex is going to look like. This gives us a pretty big scope for the game. You have to watch it use Quick Attack 25 times and Bite 25 times. And then you've got, you know, defeating it with the ground type move. So at minimum, you have to defeat it 15 times. Possibly more, because you might not defeat it with the ground type move one time by accident. Um, and then you can also catch 15 of them. So to get your Pokedex all the way up is going to take quite some time. Now, on here it's also got number you've evolved. This person has evolved one. So you're going to have to evolve them, you're going to have to battle them, you're going to have to catch them, observe them. Uh, and I think it's going to take you quite, quite a long time to finish. I think there's going to be a lot of repa uh, replayability. Um, not with starting a new game, but with playing one game and really going in depth uh, and, and really getting those played hour times up. You know, you might put a hundred hours into this game. The story is not going to take a hundred hours, of course, but to complete all these extra um, little missions that are needed and can give you extra little uh, maybe rewards and things throughout the game, yeah, I think it's going to take quite some time. Um, and see over here it says entire Isui region and then it gets broken down into some smaller bits. So these are probably the different areas of things and then you can look at a larger map itself. There's a lot more details in here that we could go into um, but we're talking about just the sort of concept of the game here and a big concept of this game is completing the first Pokedex. Uh, so moving on to catching Pokemon. Now in this game catching Pokemon is very different uh, to previous games. It's actually much more like, now I haven't played this, but uh, Pixelmon, so Minecraft, Pokemon on Minecraft. Um, from how I know that works, I've watched a bit of it, um, is you can go up to a Pokemon that's in the wild and throw a Pokeball at it and see if it catches at full health, just randomly. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then you throw a ball at it and then it uh, initiates the battle with uh, Pokemon from your team. That very much seems to be how this game works uh, in its new catching mechanic. And so there are these different versions, different ways, which are much more natural of catching a Pokemon. Then obviously you can move into a battle if throwing a Pokeball at it first doesn't straight up work. You battle it, weaken it, just like you would in a normal game. Um, but in this one, it's not about running into it, it's about you need to throw your Pokeball at the Pokemon. That's a really big, really big part of this. And then we get into something cool, that you seem to be able to throw Pokeballs to either catch them or maybe initiate battles from riding the backs of other Pokemon. So it looks like you have a lot of freedom as to how you can sort of get around and uh, navigate this world and negotiate different situations. Uh, there's a scene where I think you're leaping out of the water in one of the trailers and you just chuck this ball at I think an octillery and you can catch it. Like that's that's very cool. That's a very good thing. I'm very happy to sort of see that in a Pokemon game. It's very different. A lot of this is about sort of breaking the original concepts of a Pokemon game and I think that that's when games get really good. And connecting to the last picture obviously, Ride Pokemon. Now that's not a, necessarily a new thing in Pokemon, but I think the freedom that this is going to give you does, is new. So previously Ride Pokemon in other games, I think back to Sun and Moon, uh, have just replaced HMs. And that is essentially what they're going to do here as well. They're going to replace HMs. Um, but I think also, you know, Weirdia here is going to, what a silly name by the way, Weirdia, uh, is going to replace like if you've played other sort of open world RPG games, it's going to be like the horse or driving a car around a city in a game. It's going to be your main sort of faster way of travel. And then obviously Basque Legion here is going to replace surf and waterfall and any sort of water-based travel 
Um, but like was mentioned in the earlier picture, you can still have that freedom to throw a ball and to start a battle. Uh, and it looks very cool. I don't think it's just strictly a HM replacement, which is what some other ride versions have been. And obviously one of the very cool ones is getting to fly around on Braviari. It kind of reminds me of playing um, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, where you got to fly around on the Latios in the end game. Except this is going to be much earlier. So a very, a very cool concept that they've brought in, um, which just makes sense as you get sort of into more open stuff for Pokemon, rather than just clicking fly and have it, having it be a fast travel mechanic, uh, you can actually go around and, and use it. And I think that that's, that's one of the better things that you get to see. Now the battle system, this is a big difference as well. Um, I say big difference, it's actually still rather similar. It's not gonna be totally foreign to someone who has played Pokemon before. Um, so if you look here, we have the action order over in the right corner. Lucario, Gastrodon, then Lucario goes a couple times in a row. So the way that I believe that works is that Lucario's speed stat is much higher than Gastrodon. So not just the fact that he gets to move first, which is how it's been in Pokemon games before, but he gets to move multiple times in a row. I think that's a cool addition. Really make use of having that speed stat be uh, be much higher rather than getting just to move first and then taking it in turns. You get a couple in a row. And then down here, these little symbols, which I don't really know what they look like exactly, but they give you the ability to use uh, two different battle styles, agility, strong style and agile style. Um, and that's going to add a new element of do you want to go with power or do you want to go with speed? Um, and if you look here at the PP of these moves, uh, in a video that came out just recently, they've said that if you use Agile or Strong Style, it does use two PP per move rather than one. So, uh, and you don't have to use it. You can just use the standard move. So again, sort of allowing more sort of creative uh, freedom with how you want to sort of tackle this game, more strategy that's involved, which is really one of the big things. Uh, and it's not in this image here, but it looks like moves have also been al altered um, throughout the game. So close combat having 5 PP, I believe that's right. But there's another uh, screenshot that was released um, at some point, which has a move that has 5 PP, I think it's Thunder maybe, um, has 10 PP instead, instead now it has 5. So little things like that that have been changed. Um, and I believe... Uh, yes, and as well, the stats of these Pokemon have been changed. So if we look at the Cyndaquil here on your team, sorry, I got something covering the screen. Cyndaquil at level, uh, level 13 has 62 HP. From my understanding is that that's much higher than what it actually is in a game now. So they've reworked all the stats um, and there's a few other screenshots and videos that you can look at where it really does show these stats and that they're completely different to how they would be in a game usually so you know another little cool sort of aspect to to keep an eye on is this stat change and the move change and, and the ability for more um, yeah just more freedom and more strategy okay and then we move into items now this is kind of a big RPG element is crafting finding items around the world um, now we can now craft pokeballs and different versions of Pokeballs. It looks like the Heavy Ball is going to be an important uh, ball throughout the game. And again, has a different function to how a Heavy Ball would usually be used in the normal game. So again, changing up these concepts is a big thing um, in Legends Arceus, which I think is really good. Uh, and then, you know, there's going to be a lot of crafting of, of revives and smoke bombs is a different thing. Since when has there been a smoke bomb in a game, you know, it's it's uh, bringing these different L RPG elements into a Pokemon game. Very cool stuff, you know, very cool stuff. Um, but lots of crafting and in the video that was released today or yesterday, you can see uh, a lot of the sort of resources and materials that you have to get. Over here we have a Caster Fern and a Soot Foot Root, I believe is how you say it, uh, to craft different items. And so gathering those resources is going to be a big big thing uh, here we have some town some stuff in the town the merchants 
Um, so not just going out and grabbing these resources, but being able to buy items straight up. He's got some orange berries in here. Uh, there looks like some maybe map elements, pokeballs he's selling. So it looks like we're not going to be able to just, uh, we're not going to have to just craft things. We can also go to shops and buy them, which is, which is good as well for the people who prefer not to sort of dig real deep into crafting. It can be quite daunting, um, crafting systems in games. Uh, like for example, I love The Witcher 3, but crafting in that game is a big sort of undertaking to get your head around and a lot of people don't want to get into that. So I think having the option to do both, again, freedom to do what, what you like, a big good thing. Merchants that are going to be around the place, we'll touch more on some of them a bit later on as well. Okay, now moving into story elements. This is going to be probably a pretty heavy, story heavy game, I would hope. Um, the story in previous Pokemon games usually leaves a lot to be desired. It's, there's a bad guy team, they try to take over the world. At the same time, you're getting stronger as a Pokemon trainer. You become the best Pokemon trainer and you stop the bad guys. Generally, that's how they go, right? I think this one's going to be a bit more nuanced, hopefully. M more of uh, more in-depth detail, more for a, an adult, mature, older audience. Um, with more layers and, and better character developments and things like that. So a big part of the story, I think, especially early on, is going to be picking your clan. We have the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan, as you can see, blue and pink, from the Diamond games, which were in Sinnoh, if you've played Gen 4, and recently with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So the leader of the Diamond Clan is Adamant, and the leader of the Pearl Clan is Irida. Now, I would have thought, it makes more sense to be uh, like the adamant orb and the, what is it, the lustrous orb? Something like that for the pearl, but they've gone with a Ritter, which is fine, right? It's fine. Um, but I think picking these, picking these clans, picking between which one you like and which one you decide to ultimately go with uh, is really gonna set up your story for later on in the game and take you down a certain path. You may be able to replay the game and one time you play as the Diamond Clan, and one time you play as the Pearl Clan. Um, I think that could be a really cool direction. Now, if you ultimately don't get to choose, these clans are still used, where, as you can see down here, people around the world are already in the Diamond Clan or, or the Pearl Clan themselves. So if you don't have that choice, it's still being utilized with the Wardens and other characters throughout the game. So regardless of how used it is, I think it's going to be an important thing. And it may lead to Dialga and Palkia coming into the game uh, later on. Maybe if you pick the Pearl Clan, you get to catch Palkia as the one of the big bosses at the end. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Now, the importance of Arceus is probably, I guess, the biggest question of this game. It's named after Arceus, Legends Arceus. So, Obviously, Arceus plays into this somehow, it's just how. Um, there have been some discussions in trailers of an almighty Sinnoh sort of character that is mentioned. I tend to think that that could be a mix of Dialga and Palkia rather than Arceus. But Arceus could be, or is, this region's creator and the world's creator. Um, and so, do people believe more in Sinnoh rather than in Arceus? Did Arceus create that almighty Sinnoh uh, being? Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how Arceus um, plays into this game. And I believe that he's probably going to be a pretty strong final boss once you complete the game. And in some trailers, there's been these little rumblings around the top of Mount Coronet and I think in a couple of other areas as well some sort of lightning storms and thunderstorms and things have come up um, as you can see here there's obviously some activity at the top of Mount Coronet and I think from the how much they've showed Mount Coronet in images and videos I think it's going to be a pretty important spot so keep your eye on that obviously at the top is uh, I'm forgetting the name but the, the ancient ruins where you go and defeat um, Cyrus in Diamond and Pearl, Platinum, uh, Spear Pillar, that's it. Spear Pillar is, I think, going to be hopefully intact um, at this point, and we'll get to see Arceus in some form. So that's going to be cool to keep an eye on as well. 
Okay, now the characters. For this part, we're going to move over to the website. There's lots of characters in here. We have our professor, who really looks a bit silly, doesn't he? I don't think he's going to be as important as he has been in other games, which is odd considering that in other games they're the ones who ask you to complete a Pokedex. We'll see how that plays into this one here, but I think it's going to be a little bit different. We have the commander here, I think is going to be a big sort of boss, um, more taking the role of what the um, professor would in previous games, but I could be wrong, I don't know. Maybe I'm just saying that because he is the ancestor of um, Rowan in Diamond and Pearl. We'll see. Also, a little note, his colour scheme is very Pokemon Platinum Giratina-like. Might be nothing, but the red, black and the yellow, big Giratina vibes. I'll be keeping an eye out for that, possibly. Maybe he's a bad guy. We have Silene, who's obviously uh, an ancestor of Cyrus. Um, just in its look and demeanour and things, you can see that she is obviously connected and is going to be important in some way. We move here to May, and now a lot of these characters, May, Leon, Iskan, Arezu, they, they are descendants, or not descendants, they're ancestors of a lot of characters we've seen in later games. Not necessarily all connected to Diamond and Pearl, which I think is cool as well. Um, Arezu here looks like it's one maybe connected to Commander Mars, I believe is the one with this sort of red helmet hair looking thing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how these characters are linked to Diamond and Pearl and other regions and also how they're going to play into the story uh, and their level of importance for different characters. So it's going to be interesting to see. Okay, moving back over to my PowerPoint presentation here. We have the Hisui region and its towns. Now, how are these towns throughout the region going to look, right? Are they all going to be as developed as Jubilife Village is, which you can see here? You know, they have a massive brick building here that's, that is very well built and, and developed, obviously. So they've been around for some time. They didn't, they didn't show up yesterday and build this thing. It's taken them a minute. So are other villages around the Hisui region going to be at a similar stage? Are they going to be more primitive? Are they going to be less primitive? What's what's the deal here? You know, places like Celestic Town and Snowpoint City, they are they both have very ancient ties. Celestic Town is called the oldest town in the region. Snowpoint City has the section where the temple where uh, Regigigas is. So it's going to be interesting to see how that happens. You know, what do they look like across across the region? Are there going to be ranches at all these different villages and towns? Ranches are a cool part of this game as well, you know, replacing the sort of technological aspect of a PC and becoming a ranch. I like that. Uh, are they going to have little shops and stores at other villages? How, how are they going to look? How, how developed are they? And now on this map, again, a little bit of a blurry image, some of them aren't so great. But if you look up the top here in the snow, it looks like there's some tents and some people around there. It looks like there could potentially be a little temple up here too. Um, so maybe they've got a bit of a settlement going. Uh, Jubilife City is a pretty big one. But what about Hardhome City? Which would be maybe somewhere around here or in here perhaps. I can't quite put my finger on where it would be. Maybe here, I believe. Um, or even up around here, you get it, right? Hardhome City is the big, big city in Diamond and Pearl in the Sino region. So how how developed are they? Were they relatively new? Uh, up in here, which give me the mouse back. Up in here looks like that could be a Celestic Town little section that's got a very ancient tie uh, within the region. So how how developed are they? It's going to be another interesting question, just to see what the other settlements look like. You know, there's people over here carrying some water, doing some farming. It's going to be a cool aspect to keep an eye out on. How developed is this region as a people? Okay, and then we move into the Pokemon of the Hisui region. Some of the new ones that have come in uh, and we'll move back over to the website. So here we have our partner Pokemon, which are three Pokemon from different regions that have supposedly been brought in 
uh, for you to start your journey on. Now, one thing I did hear as a rumor was that, it might be confirmed even, that you can catch these Pokemon out in the wild. Usually I'd be cool with that, because I think it's silly that you can't get starters out in the wild um, in previous Pokemon games. I understand that that's the whole point of having a starter, but if they're from that region, they should be there somewhere, right? So for me, it now doesn't really quite make sense that you'll be able to go and catch a Rowlet out in a region where Rowlet is supposedly not from. Rowlet's been brought in from a different region by the professor or someone who's traveled and you can pick them as your partner, but they're not actually from here. So I feel like it will be a bit weird to see them out in the wild, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just dumb, which is possible. And then we move into some of our newly discovered Pokemon. We have our ride Pokemon, Weird Deer, Basque Legion, and Cleavor. Now, I don't believe Cleavor's a ride Pokemon, but he is a noble Pokemon, which is going to be... Uh, I think included in some of those HM replacements. So I, I think it's pretty obvious that Cleavor is going to be used for cut, right? You need to cut down a tree, you need to make some path open up. I think Cleavor is your man. Um, and there are some rumors of other ones that maybe have rock climb uh, and things like that that are yet to be announced and will be discoveries when the game comes out that you might still be able to ride on and move differently. So. Keep an eye on some of that stuff too, but another cool little aspect of this game. And then into some of our regional forms, which has become a bit of a staple of new Pokemon games. When you're in a new region, some Pokemon has grown a certain new way. I think it's cool. Um, they don't tend to be ones that I usually go for. I'm a big Zoroark fan of the original, so I guess I'll probably get this one. It looks kind of cool. Um, but as to what my team will be, I don't know. There are boss Pokemon, as well as noble Pokemon, they're a little bit different. Uh, and some of those boss Pokemon are Pokemon that I really like, you know, Electivire, Gyarados, that sort of thing. So, maybe, maybe I get some of those guys. I think it's going to be, you know, generally I like to plan out my Pokemon team and really get the ones that I like the most. But I think for this game it's going to be a bit more free-flowing. Hey, here's this one, I'm going to pick it up, he can be on my team. Oh, this is a big boss Pokemon. He's gonna sort of be the anchor of my team for a while. I think it's, I think it's gonna be changing and different as we go along. Okay, and then some of my general thoughts on this game, what it's gonna be like, what do I think of it? Is it gonna be like Breath of the Wild? Initially, I think when it was first announced, yeah, I thought it would be Pokemon, but Breath of the Wild. Like Breath of the Wild, but Pokemon, um, essentially. And this shot confirmed that in my mind really. Um, if you've played Breath of the Wild, one of the first scenes, you run up behind Link, over a little cliff, you see a mountain in the distance, very reminiscent of this. They've heavily leaned into that look. Here is that shot. It's a little bit blurry and it's not quite, um, it's a little bit after the bit I'm talking about, just by a few seconds. But as he rises over this sort of edge of the cliff, you look out over the edge and you can see uh, Death Mountain or whatever it's called in the distance, you've got Hyrule Castle, uh, and then all these forest lands in between. So they've really gone for the same sort of vibe of, yeah, this is Breath of the Wild, but in a Pokemon setting, which is very exciting. But there are some drawbacks, right? So let's get into some stuff that I don't really like. And it's either the art style or the graphics, or I don't know what you want to put it down to, but just the way the game looks. Not so much the Pokemon, but the world itself. Look at this dirt here, this path. It's shiny. Now, if that was wet and mud, maybe that works. Maybe that's okay. You know, this does look like it could possibly be a marsh sort of land, and that might be all right. But then I look at something like these trees, and yeah, the trees have improved definitely from when the game first came out as a trailer, but I just don't, I just don't like it, you know? These trees up in the background, I didn't get a good clear shot of them in any of these screenshots, I don't think, today. But those trees look horrible. They're just a stick with terrible textures. And Pokemon is really not known, or Game Freak especially, is really not known for its sort of graphical ability. And it's really disappointing because when you compare it to a game like Breath of the Wild, again, this is a blurry image, so not even a good one to look at. Look how much better and more sort of 
lively this game looks, M much more natural. Obviously it's not super realistic like a PlayStation or an Xbox game would be. Um, you know, they're very sort of realism based 4K graphics, you know, super powerful stuff. And Pokemon doesn't have to be that, it doesn't have to be Skyrim, uh, but with Pokemon. But to at least, I think, want Breath of the Wild level graphics is not reaching too far. The game came out five years ago, and they're, they're not at their level yet. They've had a lot more practice, Zelda games and their makers, but it's, it's really disappointing. Look at this. Look at that grass. That's some green ovals that they've just dotted into this sand. Now this was an image from, I think, the first trailer, so it's going to improve from this, but this is more of an art style choice, and it hasn't really improved up until now. Let's compare this to the sand area in Breath of the Wild. Again, another sort of blurry-ish image, but look at the water, look at the texture of the sand. The, the trunks of these trees, the texture that you can see on them, it's just not no comparison, it's not even close. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to say other than I'm just really disappointed. Like, you've been making games for a while now, Pokemon, and I get you've not been on the big screen very long, you've not been on consoles very long, that's all very fair, but I just think with a game that came out five or six years ago, and you're really not even getting close to the graphics, I don't know, I mean, I expect a little bit, a little bit more than that, you know, and I don't even think this is a game sort of targeted for younger kids. I think this is targeted at an older audience and I think the older audience wants these sort of better graphics. Okay, and this leads me into, will there be more Legends based games? Uh, will Pokemon Legends become a series? And I, I think there's a very good chance that it does. Um, although I think a lot of us thought that the Let's Go series or franchise part of Pokemon would become a series itself. Um, having Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, maybe you move into a Let's Go sort of Johto region. Um, and they would be more of these sort of younger based audience games. But they haven't made another one since then, so Legends might be the same. This could be sort of a one-off uh, or just the start of different types of Pokemon games, which would be cool. Maybe they won't all be Pokemon Legends games, but they'll be different open world, different settings, things like that. Um, but I think there's a very good chance that, you know, today it's Pokemon Legends Arceus, maybe in a few years time it's Pokemon Legends Rayquaza or something like that, you know? So I think there's a lot of potential there to become uh, a Pokemon Legends series that runs on. And that would be targeted at the older audience, then you have the, the main generation of Pokemon, which is targeted kind of for everyone, um, a, a, as well as more of a, a slightly younger base. And then maybe even they bring Let's Go back and they have the Let's Go games for the younger fans. Uh, okay, and so I guess bouncing off of that is what would make my perfect Pokemon game? What things, this is probably going to be the closest game to how I want a Pokemon game to be and what I think Pokemon has the potential to become, but it's not quite there yet. So what would I change? If we're looking at this image here, I am a big fan of these sort of wild encounters where Pokemon can attack you just running around. That's something that I really do like and you having that sort of freedom to move around and dodge and attack and things like that. What I would do, as one of the big things, is I would remove the whole turn-based system. And I would go into more of a combat style, like in Breath of the Wild, where there's hitboxes, and you can sort of target at an enemy and move around a little battlefield. You could maybe have A, B, X and Y on your controller. B, let's use Lucario as an example. A could be Aurasphere. You press A, it uses Aurasphere. You keep in the PP system, that could even stay. Uh, B would be close combat, X could be crunch, and Y could be bulk up. You keep the PP system, you can move around, you can target at your Pokemon. If they attack you, you have the chance to dodge. You know, with status moves, maybe if you have a move like agility, it boosts your speed. Maybe you move twice as fast around this field, a little boost. Or if someone uses Thunder Wave on you and it hits, uh, they, you now have half speed. So you can't move as fast, you can't really dodge attacks very well. Um, 
that's what I would do. I think that would be the big, the biggest thing, is I would make Pokemon battles be much more like the anime. That is one thing that I want Pokemon games to lean more towards, is becoming more like the anime. Which I think a lot of people have watched, and a lot of people prefer that world of Pokemon, rather than the gaming world of Pokemon, because they are different. They're obviously very much the same, but there's little tweaks and differences that I think uh, I certainly prefer in the anime and the story of the, the show rather than in the game. So that'd be the biggest change I make. But then something uh, that I think is in this game that I really am going to enjoy and what I would definitely include in my uh, Pokemon game, if it was to be perfect, I suppose you could say, uh, is to have these Pokemon act like wild animals out, out in the wild, in nature, um, eating some grass, you know, playing with each other, those sorts of things. Rather than how they've been in previous Pokemon games where if a Pokemon's in the overworld it takes a couple steps this way and then it turns 90 degrees and then it takes a couple steps this way and then it might turn and stop and then it takes a couple, you know, just being robotic really and, and not natural. I think seeing Pokemon in this game and what I would include is having them be wild animals essentially which I think is very important to to keep with this sort of whole open nature-based sort of game. So, that uh, essentially brings me to the end of this video. Some of my thoughts on Legends Arceus. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you agree with some of the stuff that I said? Do you not agree? What do you like about the Pokemon games? The direction they've been heading? What do you not like? Uh, are you looking forward to Legends Arceus? Let me know down in those comments. Um, I look forward to hearing you. I'll definitely be reading them. Uh, I'll also be getting the game and streaming it from time to time. It's not going to be all I stream. Uh, I, I don't just make Pokemon content, I do make other things as well. Um, but I, I do enjoy playing Pokemon games, doing Pokemon based stuff. So check that out. Liam Live 23 over on Twitch. Trying to stream more often if I can. This will be on there from time to time. Uh, and I'm very excited to be playing. Hopefully you've enjoyed, hopefully you agree or even disagree with some of the points that I've brought up. Like I said, let me know and I guess I'll just see you next time. Bye bye.